seated. So I wish you a very good morning uh, to one and all. And we find ourselves once again in the strangest of times in another national lockdown due to the coronavirus. During these times, it's all too easy to become inward looking and to forget those outside of our immediate family or vicinity. It's also too easy to become used to the Groundhog Day scenario where each day seems so very similar to the last. It's days like today, however, Armistice Day, where it is essential that we stop and we think of the wider community. To think of those currently serving in Her Majesty's forces. To remember all those who made the ultimate sacrifice so that we can enjoy the lives that we lead. And of course, in these coronavirus times, nothing is straightforward. The services are made available to you in your own home so that we can remember and pay our respects during a time when it's impossible for us to come together. You will notice that the majority of the chapel is empty. The schoolboys will be attending the service in their classrooms via their interacting whiteboards. Lottie and I are masked, apart from when we are speaking. It will not escape your attention that the address so kindly given by Major Foot Tapping is virtual, recorded in Nairobi. You will also notice that we have different choirs singing at different times and in different places. I'm very pleased to say, due to the magic of film and technology, you will not need to witness the cleaning and disinfecting that takes place before they swap. You will be pleased to know that the boys within each choir are part of the same household, hence Lottie and I not singing along with them, but that everyone else involved in this service is socially distancing. And finally, that our booglers, they're from the same household too, and they'll be playing in the antechapel. So with matters of housekeeping out of the way, I take this opportunity to remind you of the importance of maintaining contact during these days. Just because we cannot see each other in person doesn't mean we should not keep in touch with each other. Quite the opposite is the case. Please reach out to each other online or on the telephone during these very difficult times. And as we move to this morning's service, I, I hope that you might have sight of the order of service sheet. Uh, one of these. If you don't, I will do my very best to lead you along the way. So on that, please can I ask you to turn to our order of service sheets. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Let us say together. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoings and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song we will praise our God. Thank you. If you would please sit for our first reading, read by this term's head boy, William MacDonald. Thank you, William. John, chapter 15, verses 5 to 17. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away in withers. Such branches, such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burn. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, 
Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. I have told you this, so that, my, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends, for everything that I have learned from my Father, I have made you known to him. You do not choose me, but I choose you and appoint you, so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so, but whatever you ask in the name the Father will give you, this is my command, love each other. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The choir will now sing for us a Gaelic blessing by John Rutter. Thank you, Lottie. Uh, we now merge to our sermon from Major Foot Tapping from Nairobi. It's a great privilege to speak to you today. For those of you in Solomon's year, perhaps you'll recognise my voice. For those of you who can't picture me, I'm the one second on the right in the photo you can hopefully see. The photo was taken in a patrol base alongside members of the squadron I served in, deep in the Helmand River Valley in Afghanistan. 
I had slightly less grey hair in 2010. As you hear me talk, you'll hopefully see photos that I've compiled, some from the archive and some from my time in the army. Hopefully these will at least keep the youngsters tuned in. I'm sad we're not together in the familiar surroundings of the chapel, and it seems strange to be recording this in my study in Nairobi to be broadcast over the web to the Asgarf community, not least to my son sat in a classroom in North Yorkshire. But as a serving member of the armed forces, I greatly value the opportunity to talk to you. It is an important day in mine and my family's yearly calendar, as we pay tribute to the sacrifice of those who have served and fallen in conflict, most notably in the Great War and World War II, but also in all other conflicts. On a personal level, it is also a time when I spend a moment thinking about those who I've served with, who did not return home to their friends and families, like I was fortunate to do. In both cases, I remember the sacrifice they all made for the relative peace we live in and our freedom. As a second national lockdown in the UK is announced, I'm reminded how important freedom is. Although not the same, it does bring into perspective what was fought for then. It is often when something is removed or lost that we remember its true value. One consequence of the lockdown is the events at the Cenotaph in London, which normally mark the nation's remembrance, will not go ahead in the same way. This is normally a time where our service chiefs, the Prime Minister and senior members of Parliament, the monarch and a large number of serving members of the armed forces and veterans gather to pay tribute to those that have fallen. This year will be a much smaller affair. At Aysgarth too, we will not be together in one place in the familiar surroundings of the chapel. But even if we cannot remember in this traditional way, I think it's so very important, especially in these times, that we continue to pay tribute to those who've made that sacrifice. So I'm thankful for school and its staff who've made this possible and suffered my technical ineptitude. So what is Remembrance Day and why does it play such an important part in my family's and our country's calendar? Whilst boys, and perhaps parents listening, will no doubt grimace when they hear the word Latin, it might be useful for a moment to look at the provenance of the word Remembrance, to give us a better idea of its meaning. The word is made up of two Latin parts, memor and the prefix re. For many listening, not least those in their common entrance year, I will not need to remind you of what memor means. If we were in person, I would have asked you, and I'm sure I would have seen a sea of hands and answers delivered with conviction, a memory, recalling a fact, a thought or story, or some combination thereof. By adding the prefix re, Translated it again, the meaning has shifted to bringing a memory forward again. So remembrance literally translates to the act of bringing a memory into one's consciousness again. You'll no doubt be pleased to hear that is the last of the Latin. The act of remembrance is therefore an attempt to bring forward the memories of those conflicts into our consciousness now, to bring those memories to life and to relive them thus enabling us to reflect more on the sacrifices made and why. The events we now come to see as familiar began in 1919, with a minute's silence on the 11th of November. By just a year later, in 1920, with the simultaneous burial of the unknown soldier in Westminster Abbey and the gathering around the newly constructed cenotaph, they had grown to largely what we recognise today, some 100 years later. This repeated and familiar act provides a time when the events of history are brought forward into our personal consciousness, but also the consciousness of the nation. By doing a familiar series of things, we more actively remember. You will probably be glad to hear that there is no impending barrage of artillery, close air support or machine gun fire. By hearing the stories of others or the histories of past conflicts, we can hopefully understand more fully the sacrifices made by military families and the nation. It is not to celebrate the act of war or to present those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice as victims, but to recognise the horrors of war and honour those who have, who have fallen for the collective good. When I attend a remembrance parade, I tend to reflect on those who I've served with who have not returned. One of those soldiers is Paul Watkins. Paul had served in my regiment the 9th Welfare Royal Lancers, since coming to the UK from South Africa after leaving school. 
I remember him most for his love of life, his infectious smile, always one to not take himself too seriously, and of course as a South African, his passion for rugby. Much like many of you, he would be in front of a television for the next Lions Tour or World Cup, craving to see the game with his friends. I first met Paul in Winchester when he enlisted in 2007. He was in my training squadron. We both returned to the regiment and deployed to Iraq in 2008. On our return, Paul joined C Squadron where I was a troop leader, and he served as my gunner. We spent countless hours in a wet and cold turret on the plains of North Germany. Whilst we sat looking through our sights, shaking in the cold European winters, waiting for the next exercise scenario to play out, the usual banter would take place. Paul enjoyed nothing more than ribbing me at the latest England loss in cricket, or rugby, or actually any other sport for that matter. For the regimental deployment to Afghanistan, two years later, Paul remained in C Squadron and I moved up to take on a position in B Squadron. Paul's best friend in the regiment was Lance Corporal Marshall, or Marshy as we knew him. As it happened, Marshy was my gunner in Afghanistan, and we were based just down the Helmand River towards Lashkagar from Paul's troop, who were in Goreshk. Whilst listening out on the net on a routine operation on the 16th of July, I heard the contact report. Often an exciting time, but also regularly tinged with foreboding. We had all deployed as mentors, working side by side with the Afghan National Army in small teams, fighting the Taliban daily. So it was not an uncommon occurrence. But this time it was different. A casualty report quickly followed. As everyone freed up the net to enable the evacuation, there was an eerie silence. I instantly recognised Paul's that number, a six-figure combination of two characters from a surname and the last four characters of a service number. Every troop leader will know his men's numbers. Marshy didn't hear it over the crackling intercom from his gunner's headset. When we returned to the base, I phoned the Sea Squadron 2nd in command on the sat phone. Paul had been shot at close quarters by an Afghan soldier serving alongside him at his heavy machine gun position on the edge of the green zone. An insider attack. Paul had died instantly. I was in charge of B Squadron and had to break the knees. I gathered the squadron behind our tents and let them know. Marshy was distraught. The next day, each squadron held a service of remembrance for Paul. It followed a familiar, comforting pattern. Not least for me, he had to deliver it. Across the Helmand province, three services were held at 11am. I remember delivering that service in a dusty checkpoint of our jackal vehicles parked in a hollow square to make a hasty chapel and my squadron pennant flying. I read out my eulogy to Paul and I gave Marshy a reading and remembered his courage in saying goodbye to his best mate and to have to crack on with his job the next day back out on patrol. Paul was a boy, a boy who was not dissimilar to many of you. He loved rugby loved being with his friends and was larger than life. A boy who had a sense of adventure, but also a boy who loved being a soldier, loved doing what he wanted to. He left behind a mother and father and two brothers. Whenever I go back to the regiment, I find the Book of Remembrance and take a moment to find Paul's page. Be silent and think about Paul and the sacrifice he made. This story isn't meant to reduce the meaning of the list of names you'll hear being read out some of the amazing stories of bravery and of those tragic sacrifices of Aesgarth boys who fell in either the Great War or Second World War, or the names you'll see carved into the walls at Eat or at the Somme. Many of the boys in the list you will hear will have been just a little older than you, having left their public schools or their farms and estates to go to war. They too would have been someone's best mate, someone's son, someone who played rugby or played cricket off the wall perhaps, or even distant relatives to some of you sat here today. As you hear those names, try to imagine them not as empty words, but a boy like Paul, who made the ultimate sacrifice and didn't return home. Would you please now stand for the act of remembrance?
Let us remember before God and commend his sure keeping those who have died for their country in war. Those whom we knew and those whom memory we treasure and all who have lived and died in the service of mankind. We remember the old age Garfields who gave their lives for their country. The brave and true age Garfields who have given their lives for their country in the cause of justice in chronological order with the starting with the First World War. A. E. Cathcart, R. Walmsley, R. A. Markham, D. R. Wilson, S. E. Forbes, J. L. I. Reed, H. G. Brooksbank, H. A. Askey, S. Brooksbank, C. G. W. Peak, J. J. Stobart, J. C. D. Brown, R. M. Torrey, G. E. Hunter, H. T. Hunter, G. P. Ledgard, C. N. F. Brown, W. F. Martin, C. F. Ward, W. B. Ord Bullet, W. A. Erskine, J. R. I. Hopkins, L. V. Bovo Johnson, N. C. Macpose, D. G. F. McBean, W. M. Parker, H. P. L. Hayworth, E. C. Chapman, A. V. Clegg, H. G. A. Moore, J. J. Kearney, R. C. Clegg, A. L. Ford, D. A. Beveridge, A. F. Chance, P. C. Preston, J. W. Backhouse, C. G. Sharp, M. I. D. Wyvern, A. M. Slingsby, J. Burden, H. L. Benson, W. Adamson, R. Duca, C. G. Winter, D. W. O. Palmer, T. J. Whitney, C. Horden, R. E. T. Huddard, C. R. E. Edmondson, D. O. Lang, G. H. H. Scott, A. M. Thorman, H. J. Butter, R. P. Brown, G. N. Greenwood Teal, H. R. Pybus, G. S. K. Butterworth, C. Hall, S. J. Pearson, J. C. F. Brown, T. R. Fawcett, B. Bloomer, C. H. D. Mann, F. O. Trankman, H. E. Backhouse, R. H. Tolson, C. P. Taylor, A. D. D. Spafford, R. H. Smith, C. D. M. Ward, R. E. Hutton Squire, G. H. Lofthouse, G. O. Lang, J. H. Bose Wilson, C. F. Savage, S. I. Jefferson, T. T. Thorpe, J. C. D. Tetley, W. E. Littleboy, H. Q. Ridley, K. Blaisley, J. A. Harris, C. F. E. Simpson, H. M. Appleton, H. K. Boston Owen, J. K. M. Hessler, C. M. Williams, R. A. Wilson, F. A. W. Armitage, J. L. Kinnear, H. N. Constantine, A. N. Hessler, E. S. Charles, J. Tilly, L. O. Vatsur, W. A. C. Headley, R. L. Tully, W. L. Nimmer, F. C. B. E. Cobham, B. C. Harrison, C. H. Bell, G. Skiro, C. G. Sutton Jones, R. A. Horden, J. S. Pearson, M. E. Horden, H. J. M. E. Allison. And in the Second World War, D. M. Agnew, W. Astor, H. G. Atkinson, J. G. Barton, J. M. Benny, J. R. De La P. Derek Beresford Pierce, A. C. R. Gross, 
A. H. Carruthers, W. H. C. Chapman, J. F. Cocky, P. M. Cocky, H. C. W. Davis, J. M. Elliott, R. C. P. Ellis, The Honourable A. S. Fraser, P. Graham, C. A. M. Grover, R. S. Harrowy, A. R. Huston, P. L. Ingham, P. C. James, J. Kennedy, M. R. Kitchen, W. L. S. Not Score, A. T. Lawson Tankley, J. H. Lewis, W. R. Marshall Adeen, D. Mina Tarvin, W. S. W. E. S. Paget, H. H. Pearson, B. J. Pearson, N. R. Peel, L. Richmond, W. A. Robinson. C. G. A. Roach, J. Samper, W. Scott Plum, W. G. C. Chevier, H. G. Sherwood, J. M. Smith, R. P. Stannard, J. A. F. Thompson, R. F. Thompson, R. K. Thompson, R. M. M. Tyndall, R. R. Tomlinson, R. P. Turner, D. C. Wallace, H. W. Woodsend, J. M. Whitworth, Reverend G. A. K., L. F. Malone. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn them. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them.
de três bicíclicas. Well, she takes the nail or bow your heads for our prayers. Let us pray for the church and the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. Let us pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict, and ask that God may give us peace for the service men and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family, friends, and all who pray for their safe return. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For civilian men, women and children whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatreds of humanity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the peacekeepers and peacemakers who seek to keep this world secure and free. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military and religious, bestow upon them gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the chance to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. God, our refuge and strength, bring near the day when all wars shall cease, and poverty and pain shall end, that earth may know the peace of heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I now invite you to stand for the final hymn today, I Vow to Thee My Country.
you please be seated? May I ask you to please kneel or bow your heads for our closing prayer, after which the head chorister will sing for us, the lads in their hundreds. As our service of remembrance comes to a close, we remember those who made the great sacrifice during the two world wars. We remember those who have given their lives in the service of their country in other conflicts. We pray for those who suffer at this time. We pray for those who have been bereaved. We pray for peace. We pray that we may be worthy of the sacrifice made on our behalf. Amen. Teach us, good Lord, to serve thee as thou deservest, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labour and not to ask for any reward, save that of knowing that we do thy will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Be with us all, evermore.